All right. Hello, hello, and welcome. I am Nathan Crane, the director of Healing Life. As usual, it is amazing to see all of your beautiful faces. As usual, this is not medical advice. This is informational only. Please consult with your own integrative practitioner, whoever your primary care person is uh, for specific medical advice, or reach out to Dr. Elias and his team um, if you want to work with him as well. But without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Isaac Elias. He's a recognized expert and um, entrepreneur with over 30 years of clinical research and experience in the field of integrative medicine with a focus on innovative approaches to chronic illness and oncology. We were talking just behind the scenes. And in fact, he also has decades of experience, not only studying and practicing, but teaching some pretty incredible forms of meditation as well, which I find to be incredibly fascinating. Um, he's an international lecturer on Galactin-3 and its effects in cancer and fibrosis progression. He's a holder of more than 50 patents worldwide in the field of Galactin-3, modified citrus pectin, uh, therapeutic aphoresis, and more. He's a lifetime practitioner of meditation and other mind-body practices offering uh, retreats internationally. Dr. Isaac, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. Thanks for rescheduling. We had that hurricane come through Florida and uh, we didn't know if we were going to be able to actually do this last week. So we had to reschedule and um, our hearts go out to everybody who was affected by the hurricane. Um, we've been donating to help out people in Southern Florida. Uh, I have people that I know who have gone down and that they're volunteering their time as well. Some people have lost everything are, are, are going to be displaced for weeks and months. It's so terrible what happened. Um, so our hearts go out to everybody who was affected um, by that hurricane. Thankfully here in Jacksonville, it went right around us, didn't hit us. So grateful for that. Um, but thank you all for um, adjusting your schedules as we had to reschedule this for this week. So Dr. Isaac, uh, you wrote a book called The Survival Paradox, and it's a pretty incredible book. book. I actually have it right back here on my bookshelf, um, which you can't see, it's around the corner here. And, um, you know, there's a, fa there's, a, there's a fantastic premise in it. And we were talking a little bit beforehand too about cancer and the parasympathetic nervous system and, you know, this survival paradox situation. Can you talk a little bit about that and what the survival paradox is? Yes, of course. And maybe I, I can even share a few slides and uh... We can just see. So the survival paradox really offers a new paradigm to our understanding of health and disease in general, and it's highly practical in cancer. So we are built to survive. We are built to survive as people, as, as a nation, as communities, all the way to our cellular level, and it's affecting our mitochondrial function. The mitochondrial function, when we are in, in time of, of parasympathetic dominant safety, will function normally. When we go into survival mode, it will switch into glycolysis, which is critical in cancer. But when we understand this, and we look at our body, for example, if we look at cancer, we have about rounding up 50 trillion cells in our body. And each cell, has close to 1 million reactions a second. So the fact, Nathan, that you and I can talk now is truly a miracle. 50 trillion cells working together, understanding that they're going to express themselves, they're gonna have a life, and they're going to let go. So the epitome of, so of abnormal survival response is when a cell decides it wants to survive. It doesn't want to die. And that's per definition what happens in cancer. So because this is innate in us, the initial response starts with the nervous system. It's immediate, within a fraction of a second, we respond with a sympathetic response that increases anxiety and all the classical flight and fight, and we can relax, right? Meditating, qigong, listening to music. But over time, with traumas, with genetic tendencies, with epigenetic tendencies, 
with toxins, we are not able to make a comeback. And of course, <clears throat> the abnormality of the power of the autonomic nervous system drives biochemical response. So this is well recognized. What I have researched and been demonstrated with NIH grants is that there is a biochemical response that happened within minutes and it's driven by galactin-3. So galactin-3 within minute is activated and as a result, it will start a cascade of events. And we have shown that galactin-3 goes up much before interleukin-6, much before the cytokines. <clears throat> so what is galactin-3? It's a protein that binds to different, different carbohydrate-containing compounds, glycoprotein, oligosaccharide, glycolipids, and it creates a lattice formation. Certain ligands come into here, and we, the monomer turn into a pentamer, and we get a coating. So this is a coating of a biofilm <coughs> in, in the gut. This is a coating of arteriosclerotic. But in cancer, this is a coating that creates our microenvironment. And look what happens. Why is this so fundamental to the treatment of cancer? Because galactin-3 <coughs> will try to repair the crisis by creating inflammation and fibrosis. Inflammation will drive cancer, as we all know, but fibrosis equates to the cancer shielding itself from the, from the immune system. And you can see the ligands <clears throat> that galactin-3 as a bus is driving to the problematic tissue in our discussion today, cancer. So CA, mucin-1, they drive cancer growth. MEK-1-3, CD45, if we shut it down, we shut down the immune response. That's how the cancer can evade the immune system. Fibronectin, collagen, elastin creates hyperviscosity. Encadarine will drive the metastatic process. The integrins, A, right, A3, B1, integrin, sticky molecule that will create a metastatic process. <clears throat> VGF that will grow blood vessels around the cancer. <clears throat> the GAGs, and the NG2 that will drive glial inflammation, will drive brain cancer, will drive metastasis, will drive more side effects from chemotherapy or from different or from pesticides. So <clears throat> it's important to understand because what happens, and we've talked about it, Nathan, in the past when we talked about a year ago, that's, so imagine here outside the cell, you got your macrophage and they got a signal from galactin-3 and they turned inflam inflammatory. <clears throat> they come in, they block P53 and PTN. You got all this nasty cascade of metabolic abnormality, AKT, mTOR1. Now you don't have oxygen being utilized because adenosine monophosphate kinase is shut down and you got yourself the Warburg effect. Hypoxia inducing factor, the cell is in survival mode. It can't take a deep breath. It drives PDK, PDA shuts down, you get a very aggressive cancer, and that's what you see in the picture below, right? P53, PTN are blocked, <coughs> AKT, mto one HIF, MIC, PDK blocks PDH, AMPK is not working. So this will drive autoimmunity, this will drive diabetes, and this will drive cancer. That's why, for example, diabetes patients who use berberine or honokiol or metformin will have better outcome because they are blocking mto one and enhancing AMPK. So that's a little bit, very, very briefly, to really give, give, give a flavor of how something so fundamental to our being in every second will drive a process towards cancer and more important, will make it more aggressive. And whatever will throw this this cellular metabolism out of balance, if it's traumas, if it's stress, if it's injury, if it's lack of oxygen, if it's pesticides, if it's heavy metal, if it's toxic effect of conventional treatments, whatever it is, if it's scars, has to be factored in when we address cancer. Because when we address cancer, we got conventional treatments, and I often tell people, you can get a first opinion or you can get a second first opinion. 
but when it comes to integrative medicine, it's about the refinement that will get treatments to work better, that will have less side effect, that will change the outcome. And part of it is understanding this dynamic mechanism. Now, isn't there, uh, obviously there's, there's a purpose for Galactin-3 to be activated, right? Because it's being produced when there's an inflammatory <coughs> response in the body. Right. Now, exactly. now its role is to um, repair the, inflama the inflamed area, is that right? <clears throat> no, its role is to repair the, the danger, the stress. The threat, the threat, the threat. yes. And so it, like it, if there's it, damage, right. damage to the cell, is the galactin-3 actually going and helping to repair the damage? <clears throat> yeah, but galactin-3 will react much before the cell. So if the body feels the threat, it will respond via galactin-3 with inflammation and with fibrosis. And so that's it why actually, it, so it creates the inflammation. Exactly. Okay, uh, so, so I, I, I have I, a great slide that I don't have here. You really look at it as an upstream. So, you know, we try to deal with interleukin, NF-kappa, beta, TNF-alpha, too late. Yeah. It's like catching the waterfall with a bucket at the bottom. When you use modified cytospectin, and we, we, we show it on our studies, you stop the cascade at the top, you shut down the waterfall. And what's typical for this, you know, is like we look at the pectosol research, which has about 80 published papers in multiple fields. But we are now, we are presenting as the equivalent of ASCO in Europe, our 18 months follow up on biochemical relapse of prostate cancer, as an example. 60 patients, six oncological centers. We did a six months follow up, 18 months follow up. What we see with the research in modified cytospectin that you don't see with any other natural product is that you get certain results in vitro that are okay. You get better results in animals and you get the best results in humans. Other way around, right? We have all these substances that are amazing in vitro, in vivo, but don't pan out in the clinic. And the reason is the key role of galactin-3 and it's multiple synergistic damaging effects. And when you shut it down, the benefits, we're talking about 90% improvement compared to baseline, nine zero after 18 months, you know, really un unheard of. And you know, with side effects being joint pains are better, you know, and memory is better. Why? And that's the point, because we are addressing this damaging survival response at an earlier stage. And naturally, when you break down the lattice formation, then there is better oxygenation to the cell. The cell is not in a survival drive. AMPK gets activated. The cell becomes moves more towards a normal, less aggressive cell, and it responds better to treatment. There's less drive from mutations. And so that's why <coughs> modified it respecting and addressing galactin-3 is key in every oncological protocol. Okay, so you're saying modified citrus pectin. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, I want to play devil's advocate here a little bit. So, you know, the body produces galactin-3 for a reason, right? We need right. inflammation. Inflammation is essential for healing. Right. But what happens is, especially with cancer <laughs> and most chronic diseases, is that when we become chronically inflamed due to the insults that we are, you know, um, uh, the insults that are impacting our body, whether it's chemicals coming in every single day, significant amount of stress, reduction in the sympathetic nervous or overactivation of the sympathetic nervous system. Um, it might be, um, you know, uh, chemicals in the air, water, foods, these kinds of things, smoking, cigarettes, alcohol, anything that's going to damage DNA consistently and lead to that chronic inflammatory process. We know scientifically that just the process of inflammation in a chronic state of, of uh, deterioration repair, deterioration repair produces damage to healthy cells, creating DNA damage, potentially leading to chronically fermented <clears throat> cells, which can lead to cancer cells, right? right. Like, so, so playing devil's advocate, what happens if we, um, stop put a stop to the galactin-3 is there any side effects of that because the body needs it to deal with 
you know, to produce inflammation? Or is it because the body's already chronically inflamed, this is a way to help, you know, reduce some of that inflammation to reduce the damage that's coming from the chronic <clears throat> inflammation? Yeah, so it's an excellent question, a common one. And the explanation is actually simpler. The body will still produce galactin-3 when it's needed, where it's needed. That's the beauty. That's why it's not a double-edged sword. For example, there are certain treatments, for example, blocking TNF-alpha receptors. You get a stronger TNF-alpha inflammatory anti-cancer effect, but the patient can die from the inflammation. Here it's not. The, you are in the same time improving the immune function. For example, PDL1 inhibitors don't work when galactin-3 levels are elevated in the blood. Merck knows it. Okay, so for example, when you blow galactin-3, you'll get a better immune response. That's what we see in biochemical relapse. What is biochemical relapse? We removed the prostate cancer. There is no PSA. There's no prostate. Then the cancer starts coming back. We block with, with, with galactin-3 blocker, with modified citrus pectin. We're not killing the cancer. We are allowing the body and the immune system to overcome the cancer. At right. the same time, we are reducing inflammation. So for example, going to a very different field that I published some very important papers in sepsis and acute kidney injury. We show that if we, if we use in, in, an, in the most acceptable animal sepsis model, if we give MCP before we create the sepsis, interleukin-6 rise is attenuated dramatically, creatinine rise and damage of kidneys goes down and survival goes up from uh, from 40% to over to to 80%. Very very significant. And why? Yeah, just <clears throat> by using the modified citrus exactly, pectin. Exactly, yeah. And exactly. we also showed for example in a very good journal, peer reviewed journal that when a patient comes to the to the ICU with sepsis without pre-existing conditions, kidney disease, heart disease, cancer, the level of galactin-3 at time of admission, there is no evidence of kidney damage, will determine later on during hospitalization which patient will get kidney injury and which patient will die from sepsis. Similar with cancer. When your galactin-3 levels are higher, for example, in normal population, mortality over 10 years will triple. Because... Mortality over 10 years will triple yeah. when galactin-3 is at what le what, what's a healthy that's level? That's very interesting. It's not very, and that's a key point. Thank you for the question. Because if you do a blood test on galactin-3, some labs will say under 22, some labs will say 17.8, which by the way, is based on a manual assay. The automated assay, the numbers are lower. So lower, it has to be much lower. When you look at these studies, the Firmingham offspring study, 8,000 people. You look at them, the highest 20% is just 15.6. The lowest 40% is about 10 or 11. So anything getting to the 13, 14 becomes an issue. And I want to emphasize, do not decide if to address galactin-3 and use modified citrus pectin based on galactin-3. Because mm -hmm. levels of galactin-3 are very individualized and based on genetic tendencies between having a monomer, a single galactin-3, that the lab will count as one galactin-3, or five galactin-3, that the lab will still count as one galactin-3, because it's attaching in a different place. So you really, we really have to understand that galactin-3 drives inflammaging. It drives it. Centurions have lower galactin-3 than people who are 70 or 80 years old. Centenarians are yeah. lower in galactin three than people who are seventy or eighty. Why is that? Because they are the ones who survive for a longer period of time. They have less inflammation in their body. Interesting, interesting. And what about uh, like? Have you looked at? Obviously, you have different ages of demographics of people. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, galactin three goes up with age. And just to give a sense. There are over 8,000 published papers on PubMed on galactin-3. So it's not a, it's finally coming to the forefront. But our interest in integrative medicine is for the ability of galactin-3 to regulate, potentiate, enhance dysregulated immune response 
while regulating the metabolism of the cell and allowing other treatments, oxidative treatment, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radiation therapy, integrative holistic treatment with similar effect to work better because of this very unique synergistic effect. You know, Nathan, you know well, when I showed the list of the ligands, the whole, tre the whole therapies, they chase one of these specific ligands, right? Here we got the driver of all of them that is bringing yeah. it. So, and it's, I mean, some of the papers are so elegant. For example, you look at studies in mice where you cause damage in the kidneys, the kidneys get a, a stress signal, activate macrophage, galactin-3 goes to the heart and creates damage in the heart. Right. You use, you give modified citrus pectin, you cancel it. You use mice that are genetically without galactin-3 and you don't get the damage. You use mice without galactin-3, but you put in the bone marrow cell that can produce galactin-3, the kidney will give a message to the bone marrow. You know, Chinese medicine, gene, right? The, key, the bone marrow will send activated macrophage and galactin-3 to the heart and you'll get heart damage. It's really a major early upstream regulator and activator of the immune response. And as such, it plays such an important role in oncology. And we are now engaging in more studies and we are publishing more papers in oncology. You know, it's what I call a, a 30 years overnight success, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's fascinating research and it's it's very, very interesting. Um, Marie's got a great question. She says, can measuring CRP, so C-reactive protein, can that be a, an indirect way of estimating galactin-3 levels? So is CRP and galactin-3 associated <clears throat> at all? Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. So <clears throat> galactin-3 is an FDA approved test. Every lab does this and it's, most insurances pay for it. It's a simple test. CRP is much more of a downstream, a downstream uh, uh, inflammatory markers and activator. It does cause damage. It's not ju just a marker. How do you know? When you go one degree of 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 course, right? That's a straight line. I go of course. I'm very close. And what happened? And I go. You get a big difference, right? Yep. Very big difference. Very tiny difference. Galactin three will max double itself go up by 50%. Mm -hmm. So you will get the protein will go up hundredfold. Interleukin-6 will go up thousandfold. Why? These are downstream molecules that have been affected. So correcting, addressing galactin-3 is key. But mainly when you block galactin-3, you are affecting all these nasty processes. And in the same time, if you use modified citrus pectin, then in the same time, you're also enhancing the immune system because, for example, pectosol has 10% ramnogalacturanin 2, which is the active immune enhancer in mistletoe, and it's very effective removal of heavy metals and toxins. So you get other benefits. So it's really, it's really a gift of nature that I never imagined. So pectis, pectosol is one of the products you designed, right? You yeah, formed. pectosol is the only mod. All the research I mentioned was done on pectosol. Pectosol is really the only. I mean, I am a. I'm in a good position, of uh, being used for borrowed science, you know. So modified citrus pectin is a generic term, but it's really all about pectosol. It's a specific structure, specific molecular weight, a specific way of manufacturing, and. 80 published papers and ongoing research in multiple fields. So, so Pectisol has, uh, that's what all of the research has been done on that you're referencing, but it also yes. has, what else is in it? It has mistletoe in it or what is in it that activates the immune system no, as no. well? Modified it was pectin itself has certain structures ah. that activate the immune system. And one of them, Ramnogalacturanin 2, is the active immune enhancer that you, that you see in mistletoe as well. I got it, okay. So now, now okay, a couple of questions here. Uh, one is, what is modified citrus pectin? Great question. <clears throat> so pectin is a, is a long chain of carbohydrate, of sugars, not glucose, galacturonic acid, 
that is present in the inner peel of the citrus fruit. <clears throat> it has a very large molecular weight between 80 and 200 kilo Dalton, it doesn't get absorbed and it's esterified. It's uh, it, the, the charges are neutralized. When you modify to a very small size under 13 kilo Dalton and you specifically change the structure, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream where it has its beneficial effect. So lemons, limes, um, grapefruits, uh, oranges, yeah. all yeah. citrus. Yeah, but you can eat them until the end of the world. It won't do anything. You have to modify it with enzymes, with heat, with pH to create a, a different product. That's why it's, it's not citrus pectin, it's modified citrus pectin. Now, has there been studies done on just straight citrus yeah. pectin? Yeah, actually it had no effect. And in fact, one of the initial studies even showed worsening in melanomas, a, a paper in 92, yes. Huh. Very interesting. Um, so a couple of questions, Marie's asking, well, let me go to one that came in a little bit earlier. Erica was asking, can I take MCP while on chemo? Yes. So modified citrus pectin is extremely safe with chemo. There are papers published on synergistic effect with adriamycin, with, uh, with carboplat, with taxol. Uh, we, 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 we published a paper showing enhancement of radiation therapy. There is a lot of work on, on enhancement with immunotherapy. And very important, if you're going to have a biopsy or you are pre and post surgery, modified citrus pectin is the last any kind of food you put in your mouth. And you should go to 20 grams a day. And you continue, you start about a week earlier and you continue until you get the result if it's a biopsy or at least for a few weeks. And the reason is the damage to the blood vessels and to the connective tissue that can spread cancer is driven by galactin-3. So modified citrus pectin becomes a very important tool <coughs> around biopsies, around surgeries. And it's part of the research that we are planning to do is around the, <coughs> around prostate cancer it, it, with before or after surgery because of the easy pathology. But yes, it's very important. So that's the beauty of it. It's extremely safe. It's a highly sophisticated fiber. Interesting. So, so taking it before any conventional treatments and after and higher dosages can improve the <clears throat> Yeah, usually the higher dose is around surgery because of the very short time that you don't want cells to spread. They are yep. spreading, but the, you don't want them to go into the tissue and attach. And the attachment is with galactin-3 receptors and angiogenesis. But in general, you can take modified citrus pectin with chemotherapy, with radiation therapy, <clears throat> with immunotherapy, which is not the case. I'm, I'm very conservative in which supplements to use in combination, you know, and people who have worked with me, my protocols change. Let's say it's a 21 day cycle. The whole supplement changed during the 21 days based on where we are in the process. But modified citrus pectin is, uh, can, can, can be used. And for my perspective, for my uh, practice, if you look at my charts <clears throat> 15, 20 years ago, and I've been researching modified citrus pectin for almost 28 years, it wasn't the first supplement I recommended. Now it's automatically the first supplement. In my opinion, the most important one somebody can take. And I'm not saying this lightly. You know, I'm, I'm a serious recipient of large grants. I publish dozens of papers. I'm a bona fide researcher. It has such a safety profile and a synergistic effect. And it addresses the basic process of inflammation and inflammation and inappropriate immune response that really drives, you know, every disease. So Marie is asking basically exactly that. Are there any contraindications to using uh, Pectisol? The only contraindication is if you have severe kidney failure. <clears throat> if you have chronic kidney disease and your, and your uh, EGFR is under 15, because it's buffered with potassium and sodium, it, four to one ratio, which is a healthy ratio. But with, when the kidneys are almost failing pre-dialysis, <clears throat> you are limited with an amount of potassium. So you take a lower dose, five grams a day. Usually 
for cancer, the dose of modified ciprospectin as a nutritional uh, oncological support is 15 grams in two divided dosages, seven and a half grams twice a day. And we have very specific protocols for people who are interested. So what are some of the case studies you've seen <clears throat> cancer specifically in using Pectisol? <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. Uh, we have people now who are using Pectisol for 25 years. You know, our initial, when we started with prostate cancer and this was a nutritional support, we have these patients still on, on Pectisol. It's, uh, it's remarkable when you start getting the stories and it's interesting because, because in integrative medicine, we use so many things. I never thought that modified cytospectin will have a role in metastatic disease. I mean, we know it does. We know from the animal studies <clears throat> that it reduces the metastatic process. But again, in prostate cancers, it's a really interesting field because you get this stage when somebody's metastatic, but they're still on hormonal therapy and they're not doing other treatments. And we are getting very interesting real life cases, a lot of them, and we will publish in the next 12 months. And I think it will finally shake up the oncological world. There will be enough evidence for regular oncologists to start making it a household. We are almost there with a, we will publish six months. And now we're publishing 18 months. Now we're starting a double blind on 300 patients. Will take a few years. And then when we, but when we publish the real life case reports, I think that finally people realize, wow, why wouldn't I do it? It's a fiber, it's safe. It has no side effects what integrative medicine is about. You know, we talked before the interview, we, we shared our interest in meditation and healing. <clears throat> it's really about empowering the patient. It's not only about do this treatment and that treatment. The so, more we can understand the fundamentals, the less we have to do to get to the same results. Well, and it's like, um, I, I don't know the science, maybe you do, but I would imagine that if you were measuring somebody's galactin three levels uh, before they started meditating and then measure them while and after they're meditating, I would imagine they go down. Is there any science? Great, great study on people who, who had an MI. And in an hour of the heart attack, they are either, they're not doing anything, they listen to music or they meditate. And level of galactin three levels go down by about 15%. If Six he, weeks later, 15, he, one five. And yeah. more important, the damage, to, the area of damage to the heart goes down. Six weeks later, they come back and they meditate and again, it drops down. So yes, definitely. Because why? We move from a survival drive into a place of balance. Yeah. And when the cell, we really have to understand, you know, I, I, I shared it already. But you know, it's worthwhile another, another dive. I really want people to understand this. When we move, this is a survival mode. The cell cannot take a deep breath. I often ask my patients to connect with their cancer and see why can't the cancer cell take a deep breath, right? Aerobic glycolysis, oxygen is there, why? Because P53 is suppressed, all these pathways are not working, right? We have to produce energy. Fast, we're in crisis. Glycolysis produces energy 100 times faster, but at a heavy price, it drives cancer. When we are at a place of peace, we move up to here. Yeah. And then we have a normal cell, we have a less aggressive cancer, we respond better to treatment because the mitochondria is open, radiation can work, chemo can work, oxidative treatment can work, but if the mitochondria is shut down, it's like banging our head on the wall. It's not going to work. Well, this is one of the reasons that we're uh, over the coming months. This is really exciting for everybody tuning in as well. <clears throat> we're going to be offering many live and, and brand new recorded, high quality, professionally recorded meditation classes, um, uh, energy healing classes, Qigong classes, these, these ancient healing practices that we know basically activate the immune response. And we're going to be um, bringing them to all of you through healing life. Uh, both live and recorded. And actually, uh, Dr. Isaac, we were just talking about 
um, having you involved in that as well. But just so everybody <laughs> knows, that's one of the reasons we're going to fully commit to that um, these next few months and forward, because just being able to have meditation practice daily um, is literally the one of the most empowering things you can do for your own health and your body's ability to fight cancer and chronic disease. So um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, we, we talked about it. I love the name healing life because it's not that it's having a healing life and healing brings life. Yes. So really my work, it's called open heart medicine, the infinite healing power of, of an open heart of love and compassion. When the heart is in sync, the electromagnetic field of the heart is big enough that it touches every cell in our body all the time. It's hundred times greater than the electromagnetic field of the brain. Some people don't know it. So when our heart is open, it actually radiates to people around us. So when you are, Nathan, so what you are doing, you're not only affecting the cancer patient, just, and I'm sure you know it, you're affecting the communities around them. And you yeah. can sense it, right? When 100 people meditate in a room, the power, but interesting, even through Zoom, my experience, it can somehow be transferred. It's kind of weird, like, you know, I would be guiding you through Zoom and you can feel what's going on the other side and you don't, you don't see the other side. But yeah. this is this con energy connectivity that we have to respect. There are things we can understand with science as a scientist. And there are things I've seen in my life, especially in my, the remote places of the Himalaya that science can never, never, never explain. Never. It's so true and so powerful. Um, I want to go back to Pectisol. We have a few other questions. Um, Michael was asking, could you talk about um, galactin three levels uh, as it relates to growth factors of cancer, angiogenesis, et cetera? Is it purely a high or low level on a blood test or are there different galactins playing a role with inflammation? Wow, this is a great question. So first of all, there are different galactins but the most important one is galactin-3. <clears throat> and it's important to emphasize that you cannot rely on galactin-3 because of something called methyloproteinases, MMP9. I explained the ratio between a, a, a monogalactin-3 uh, uh, and a pentamer. But in general, galactin-3 will drive the growth process. So for example, it will drive TGF beta. It will drive through the macrophage, the different interleukins and the different inflammatory compound. It will drive the myofibroblasts to create a, a, a fibrosis. So in this sense, it's not about necessarily just removal of galactin-3. It's about blocking this, this uh, carbohydrate recognition domain that I showed of galactin-3. That's why it's so important. Great, thank you. Um... Uh, somebody is asking, can Pectisol be used with cancer patients whose cancers are driven by hormones? And can it be taken if a patient is on immunotherapy hormone blockers? So a lot of the research on cancer, on, on medified citrus pectin is specifically on hormonal driven cancers, prostate cancer, breast cancer. And, you know, of course, there are other Cancer you may not be aware of that are driven by hormones such as colon cancer or, 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 or many, many glioblastomas, you know, many, many different cancers have estrogen recept receptors, DHT receptors, etc. So the answer is yes. Modified retrospective is especially critical with immunotherapy. Critical, because it will help immunotherapy to work better. Galactin-3, what it does, and I showed it in the slide, <clears throat> if, you take an immune, if you take an environment of T cells and you introduce galactin-3, all excretion of cytokines will shut down. There is no immune response. You add a galactin-3 blocker, the immune response comes back. So the galactin-3 helps the cancer to escape from the immune system by creating a microenvironment that the cancer controls, and by not allowing the immune system to respond properly. And that's why galactin-3 blockers and modified citrus pectin, the only one available, is a must as a nutritional oncological support 
while you get immunotherapy. And many of the oncological pharma companies are investing in research into galactin 3 blockers because of this. Yeah, hopefully they don't get their hands on it. <laughs> Be better to keep it as a supplement instead of a drug. Uh, well, well, this is a decision I've made many years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't the, the cell is a profitable one to make, but it was a conscious ethical one. And believe me, first they read, first they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then they say it's self-evident. So now I'm at the self-evident phase, finally, in my old age. But and, then, I, and, they, but, and then they interview you and ask you to share all your wisdom and research and science with the world. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, uh, and obviously, you know, it's, it's a journey. Yes, of course, it has to stay supplement. It's, otherwise, it will become unaffordable. Exactly. Um, what about, say somebody's already healthy, uh, they work out, they're an athlete, they're, you know, already following a lot of healthy lifestyle practices, things like that. Would it be <clears throat> disadvantageous to block Galactin-3 because Galactin-3 is going to help create a healthy inflammatory process for repair and rejuvenation, right? Um, no, 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 it won't, it won't. The no. Galactin-3 repair process is not healthy. It's not because it's driven by inflammation and fibrosis. It's where you need it. If you had an injury, even if you block it, the injured area will express galactin-3. So you are, not, you are not canceling the healing process. In fact, okay. it's shown that high galactin-3 inhibits healing. Galact Taking modified citrospectin is the most important supplement somebody can take because it regulates the upstream driver of survival-driven health problems in all levels. If you saw the number of diseases, I have a slide on this, almost every disease has a role with galactin. So you look at the research on modified citrospectin, you got kidney, you got heart, you got NASH, you got lung, you got brain, you got uh, uh, lack, lack of blood supply, you got sepsis, you got different cancers, you got detoxification. How? Because we are addressing a fundamental pattern that is a paradox, you know? It's we want to survive, and in, as a result, right, as a result, we fight and we cause damage. Look at what's happening right now in, in, in Ukraine and Russia, right? Yeah. Right, that's an example, right, of survival that is just causing. So this kind of global, global expression happens on a micro level inside our body. Right. Yeah, exactly. and the beauty of okay. meditation. Yeah. So, so it's almost mm -hmm. like it's 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 not blocking it completely. It's helping regulate it so that um, yeah. it doesn't overwhelm <laughs> your system with too much exactly. of the inflammatory process. Yeah, it blocks the circulating galactin three, which is going to cause damage. It doesn't suppress the expression on the local level where you need it. That's the beauty of the whole concept. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Well, I'm really grateful that uh, you took the time to be here and Thank share you. all this great information with everyone uh, in our community. I'm really looking forward to talking with you more about being more involved in uh, Healing Life, a part of our ongoing faculty with Healing Life um, over the coming weeks and months. And um, uh, really excited to, you know, even test. And I got some of the pectisol myself because <clears throat> I was researching this a bit and I was really looking forward to this interview to hear you actually speak about it. So, you know, just for my own, you know, uh, nutritional uh, desires and, and health um, goals and things like that. Uh, I'm looking forward to just experimenting with it myself. And uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. This has been wonderful, and uh, we appreciate you so much. Um, thanks again. Thank you, thank you all for tuning in here.